So making up some motor cables here, um, cut the ends of the cables square. Cut a bit of insulation off them. Now these are four-way cables because, in principle at least, uh, the motors should be able to carry a fair bit of current. Um, that's why these are thicker than your average uh, ribbon cables. And so what I use, prop a little connector up. And these are IDC connections. In like so. Press and hold it, and the special tool which just plugs them in. You probably can use something like a an old friend, a screwdriver, or a pair of pliers or something. Just in the same way as you can do any kind of crimping with more or less anything. Uh, but if you've got the right thing, then it's good, and they're not actually too expensive. If you can do more than a couple of them, it's worth doing. Um, and safer as well, probably. You tend not to tip them over or twist them or go in too far or something like that. So that is a little dust cap and that just clips on the top. Just neatens things up a bit. A bit of wiggle there to keep it, to keep it in. I'm going to do the other end. You probably get away without feeding these little bits out of here, uh, but with the IDC connections, I'm always a little bit nervous about how much insulation and things is knocking around in there. Whether there's the right amount, because it's all pretty precise stuff. It's meant to be kind of machine applied, and it's meant to use the right tools for the right jobs. Um, so as soon as you stop, if you start deviating from that, you're risking a bit. But just push those in. There is a slight sort of indent as they go in, probably. Uh, you can see it's there. So now in there. Again, goes on that. There's two ends. Do another two. Okay, um, I'm going to be making uh, the extension lead up for the uh, servo pen lift. Uh, this is dead straightforward. You can probably buy these off the shelf, um, but the kind of quantities I do it in uh, are probably not that affordably. Um, so there's probably lots of different ways of doing it, and I'm fairly sure mine isn't the best way because it's a pain. Uh, first of all, split the wires a bit. I should say first of all the tools that they're actually going to need. Um, crimpers, two uh, or three uh, male crimp contacts, three, three female crimp, crimp contacts, um, two of these little header casings and one joiner, so like a reverser sort of thing, um, and uh, wire strippers. You don't need, you don't need any of these tools. Uh, but it makes it a lot easier if you do have them. Um, a variation on the theme of it's easy when you know how is uh, it's easy when you've got the right tool for the job. Uh, this these crimpers aren't very good. Well, um, they're okay. They're just um, they're just not right for this size of crimp, I think, or this size of wire. Um, so they're not quite the right tool for the job, which is why this is still a bit of a pain. Um, 
aside for the fiddliness of it. Uh, I could buy a new pair, but I've got no real guarantee that they're going to be um, any better, to be honest. So just twist those. I bend the end of the contacts into three to make them thick enough to actually be gripped by the crimp. You can get away with just as they are, uh, but I was a little bit nervous about crimps anyway, so I like to bundle them up a bit so it's got a little bit more to grip. See there, right, so what goes in your mouth? I'll do these ones first. That picks up by the end, crimp it that way around, that goes into that way, the wings pointing downwards. Close it a little bit, and then Y goes in like so, so I've got that yellow, green, blue that way. Let's tidy that up, push that in there. And it should extend it through so that the wire is able to be gripped by the first set of wings there. And you can see there's two sets, there's like a tall set and there's a, there's a shorter set. The wire should go into the shorter set and the insulation should go into the longer set. If you've got a good pair of crimps and it'll, a good crimping tool rather, then it'll wrap them around nicely. This isn't one, so you've normally got to do a bit of post-production on it, which means getting a pair of pliers here, just squeezing those shut and forming the crimp properly around the insulation, which means tidying it up a bit. And twist off that bit, and there, it's one done. So, next. So these are ratchet crimps as well, so you can only pull them so far and then they automatically kind of retract. And that difficulty of pulling them out I think is to do with the size of the crimps. It means that I think it means that the size of my the things that I'm crimping is not necessarily a good match for the size of the jaws of the uh, the maybe the shape of the jaws of the uh, the, uh, the crimper. Not quite sure about that. Could be because I've had them for a while and I've used them for a while and they're a bit worn too so I don't know if that means the edges have got a bit smoother but then it's always done that to be fair. Right so this is the header for it, there's three crimped on there, these go in like one, two, three and there's some little tongues there which pop up and kind of clip it in. So I'll push that in and we just shape that a bit better because it's not going in. I sometimes think that having a misshapen uh, um, um, crimp is not such a bad thing. Uh, as long as it's secure, but it does mean that it will hold it into the housing nice and tightly. It's a bit of an odd shape. Uh, maybe that's just me uh, rationalising my own 
lack of skill. I'm just going to push that in there, and they all snap shut. And I like to lock them in, just push them back, hold the little tongues down and just push the pins back in. So that will, there's a little uh, joiner there, so that will go on like so. Okay, and then we'll do the other end. Three more crimps, but these are um, uh, female crimps. So these have a pin which go into them and these will hold on to a pin. So exact same process. Split the wires down. Take a bit of insulation off. Twist the ends up. There was a stage in which I was doing crimps for the first round of polygraph kits in which I was intending to just to use uh, just crimp, um, but ended up actually tinning the ends before I did it, um, just to give the crimps something tighter to grip onto. And I'm always I'm a bit nervous about using mixing crimping and soldering uh, because a solder makes a very brittle, a very strong but very kind of brittle joint, and a, a crimp is designed to avoid that, that's the whole point of a crimp, is that you don't have a brittle joint, you have a strong joint. Um, so I think probably for those ones there was a, a bit of a danger that that was going to end in tears. Um, there's kind of a limit to how much that can go wrong because the wire itself is, or well, the soldered part rather, is held inside the, uh, would have been held inside the, the crimp. Um, contact the metal parts so that itself shouldn't really be flexing and the part which extended out the back was not soldered which is kind of why I thought it was safe to do it um, but yeah it's not that cool that was really a, a, a mistake of inexperience I just didn't know how best to fix that see this is a crimp which has not gone that well it's formed quite well at least over the wires but there's just there's still some play in it that's no good. So what I do with that is just uh, squish it and then be extra careful to make sure that these wings kind of do wrap tightly around the installation or even stab through it. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean a bad splice, it just means one that needs a bit of uh, looking after. Not a bad splice, but a bad crimp. That's a better one. But I'll give it a squish anyway. So I always test these cables after I've used it, after I've put them together as well. Um, because it's quite a, a labour intensive procedure, there's lots and lots of opportunities for stuff to go wrong. Um, even when it looks like it could be even when it looks like it's fine. This could quite easily have, when I do the crimp, it could just bite into the insulation. So it could really well hold onto insulation. It'll give it a good tight hold and I'll think, oh, that's pretty good. That's a good one, that. But in fact, it hasn't actually touched the metal. So this sort of thing does need to be tested. I just test it just by putting it into a polygraph machine and, and trying to lift the pen on it. Uh, there is, um, I'm sure, smarter ways of doing all of this stuff, but for low volume stuff, it's it's 
maybe not better, but um, but certainly easier to just do things on a one by one basis rather than invest a lot of money in buying or constructing jigs and buying hundreds of things when I don't know whether I'm going to, only going to sell ten of them. So I'm just pushing those in there. Okay, there we go. Uh, so there's a servo motor. Just so that will go in that way. This kind of rounded edges on the top corners there, so we'll go in like that. And the key really is to uh, is the white wire should normally be the lightest colour wire on this. There's two colours of these. Um, <coughs> let me just get that for a test. And plug it in. Okay. And that will go in that way. So there is actually a little kind of triangle which you can maybe see there. Um, Printed into the, into the into the case, uh, but there would normally be a white dot on here, which I'll put on in a minute, to signify that it should go that way. So the arrow points to the signal wire. You saw it kind of come to life there. So uh, pen down and pen up. Great. So that's done.